Higher Physics, Our Dynamic Universe. The key areas covered in this topic are equations of motion for objects moving with a constant acceleration in a straight line. What we will do today is revise the definition of acceleration, state the equations of motion, and carry out calculations on equations of motion. Acceleration. Acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by time taken. We can rewrite the change in velocity as the final velocity minus the initial velocity. This lets the equation become acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken. Using symbols, this is a equals v take away u divided by t, where a is acceleration in meters per second squared, v is the final velocity in meters per second, u is the initial velocity in meters per second, and t is the time taken in seconds. So what does this mean? Acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time. An acceleration of one meter per second squared means the velocity of the body changes by one meter per second every single second. Units are meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. 2010, question one. This question is asking us for a definition of acceleration. If we write down our equation for acceleration, it looks like a equals v take away u divided by t. From this, we know acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time. So our answer here is going to be E, the change in velocity per unit time. 2005, question two. An object has a constant acceleration of three meters per second squared. Question is asking what this means. We know that acceleration is a change in velocity per unit time. So let's look for an answer that includes velocity. Both D and E mention velocity there. We want to look for an answer that mentions the change in velocity. Only E mentions this change as it said the velocity increases. So we know that E is the correct answer as it's saying the velocity of the object increases by three meters per second every second. So there is our per unit time. The equations of motion. The equations of motion are V equals U plus AT, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, and S equals a half U plus V times T, where U is the initial velocity at time of T equals zero, V is the final velocity at a time of T, A is the acceleration of an object, T is the time to accelerate from U to V, and S is the displacement of the object in time t. These equations only apply to uniform acceleration in a straight line. The vector quantities displacement, velocity and acceleration have direction associated with them, and so they will have a positive or negative sign depending on their direction. Method for tackling problems. 1. Write down all of the symbols. S, U, V, A and T. 2. Fill in all of the numbers and values you are given in the question. 3. If there are two directions, use this diagram for positive and negative values. So if your object is moving up or to the right, let it be positive, and if it's moving left or down, let it be negative. 4. Choose the best equation to suit the problem. Equations of motion travelling horizontally. Example 1. A car travelling at 20 metres per second accelerates at 5 metres per second squared for two seconds. How far does the car travel during the two seconds? First, we want to write down the values that we know. So our starting speed is 20 metres per second. Our acceleration is 5 metres per second squared. And our time is two seconds. We want to work out how far the car travels. So that's our displacement. Choosing the most appropriate equation to use, we would choose S equals UT plus a half AT squared. We now need to substitute in our values. S equals 20 times two plus a half times five times two squared. 
This gives us S equals 40 plus 10, which gives us a final answer of 50 metres. Example 2. A train travelling at 45 metres per second decelerates to 15 metres per second at 2 metres per second squared. How far does the train travel while it's decelerating? First, we want to write down our values that we know. So our start speed is 45 metres per second. Our end speed is 15 metres per second. Our acceleration is 2 metres per second, but it's a deceleration, so we need to use our negative value there. So that's going to be negative 2 metres per second squared. We want to calculate how far the train travels, so that's our displacement again. This time the equation we'll use is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Substituting in our values, we get 15 squared equals 45 squared plus 2 times minus 2 times s. Rearranging this, we get 4s equals 45 squared minus 15 squared. This gives a final answer of s equals 450 metres. Two thousand and eight question twenty one. To test the braking system of cars, a test track is set up as shown. These sensors are connected to a data logger which records the speed of a car at both P and Q. A car is driven at a constant speed of thirty meters per second until it reaches the start of the braking zone at P. The brakes are then applied. In one test, the data logger records the speed at P as thirty meters per second and the speed at Q as twelve meters per second. The car slows down at a constant rate of 9 metres per second squared between P and Q. Calculate the length of the braking zone. First, we want to write down what we know. So our start speed is 30 metres per second. Our end speed is 12 metres per second. Our acceleration is 9.0 metres per second squared, however it's slowing down, so again we want to put a negative in front of this. We want to calculate the length of the braking zone, so that's our S. The equation we need to use is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Substituting in our values, we get 12 squared equals 30 squared plus 2 times minus 9 times s. Rearranging this, we get 18s equals 30 squared minus 12 squared. This gives us a final answer of s equals 42 metres. 2004, question 22. A train of mass 7.5 times 10 to the power of 5 kilograms is travelling at 60 metres per second along a straight horizontal track. The brakes are applied and the train decelerates uniformly to rest in a time of 40 seconds. Calculate the distance the train travels between the brakes being applied and the train coming to rest. First, we need to write down what we know. So, the train has an initial speed of 60 metres per second. Because this train is coming to rest, it's going to have a final speed of zero. The time it takes to do this is 40 seconds, and we want to work out the distance the train travels. The equation we use for this is s equals a half u plus v times t. Filling in our values, we get s equals a half times 60 plus 0 times by 40. This gives us a final answer of 1,200 metres, or 1 1.2 kilometres. Equations of motion travelling vertically. What about acceleration due to gravity? When an object is shot up vertically in one dimension, i.e. with no horizontal travel, acceleration due to gravity has to be considered. On Earth, A equals 9.8 metres per second squared, and this always acts downwards. Therefore, if an object is launched vertically upwards, we have two directions, 
both positive and negative. Example 1. A ball is launched vertically upwards at a velocity of 15 metres per second. What is the height of the ball after 4 seconds? Note, acceleration has not been mentioned here. However, you are expected to know that it is involved. Choose directions. Upwards is positive and downwards is negative. First, let's write down what we know. Our start speed is 15 metres per second. Our time is 4 seconds. And our acceleration is 9.8 metres per second squared. We want to write this down as a negative, as that's the direction we chose. We want to work out the height of the ball, so that's our displacement. To solve this, we can use s equals ut plus a half at squared. Substituting in our values, we get s equals 15 times 4 plus a half times negative 9.8 times 4 squared. This is equal to 60 minus 78.4. So our final answer is going to be negative 18.4 metres.